Greetings. This presentation covers Epicor Eclipse ERP, System Phantom, how to view processes, reschedule, and kill. First off, let's start with what's a phantom. The System Phantom manages all the Eclipse program subprocesses. This is similar to a mix of uh, Linux, cron job scheduler, and uh, the tools that you use for looking at the system daemons. Before we actually look into the phantom status, I want to draw your attention to the phantom error viewer, which keeps a continuous log of problems that might be going on with the various uh, phantom processes that are going on in your system. So if you think you have to monkey around with a phantom that's misbehaving, you might want to check here first and see if you can get an idea of what's going on. Probably won't make a whole lot of sense to ordinary human beings, but if you have to uh, start talking with Eclipse tech support, uh, it might be useful if you, if you can give them some of the information that's going on in the error log. So now the uh, phantom status window, and here it's going to show you all the processes that are currently running in your system. Here's an example showing the common system processes. You'll probably have something similar going on. Keep in mind that the first screen that you see, the phantom status, is just showing, showing you the processes that are currently running, not the ones that are scheduled to run. That's uh, another window which you'll see in the next couple of slides. And uh, with this tool, of course, you're going to be able to reschedule, view, of course, and kill the processes that are in the system. Selecting Edit Schedule from the menu will allow you to take a look at the processes and reports that are scheduled to run in the system. Uh, when you get into this window, if you type in a user ID and click Update, you'll see the, the reports and processes that are scheduled uh, by this particular U Eclipse user. Uh, if you just leave it blank and hit update, it will show you the full list of uh, scheduled processes from all the users. In the job schedule maintenance, selecting adjust is used to change the date and time to run for all s the processes that you've selected before you select adjust. Uh, I never use this because it's too limited and or dangerous. Um, selecting forward uh, on a report that's scheduled to run allows you to send copies of the report to other people and not just the person who created it. And the hold and resume are self-explanatory. In Schedule Maintenance, Schedule Edit, uh, this is the tool that I use uh, the most often. It is the most granular uh, and gives the best detail for changing the process run. So it's the preferred tool that I use and all the adjustments that you would need to make for a particular process are pretty much here. Back in the Phantom Status window, uh, Kill will terminate the selected running process. Uh, keep in mind it will only kill this run. As soon as the scheduler comes around again to the next time to start the process, it will restart again automatically. So if you want the process uh, terminately, permanently uh, removed, you have to delete it from the scheduler as well. Uh, the kill process is often used to clear hung E-term or solar sessions for a user. Uh, normally they'll go to log back in, the system will tell them you're already logged in, that type of thing. And uh, you'd go into kill process and uh, do that to clear out their sessions so they can log back in and get back to doing what they were doing. Uh, fairly often, if they were in a transaction and the session gets hung, just uh, clearing the session will not unlock the transaction they were in, like sales order, um, for them to be able to get in and continue editing. And there's an additional step that needs to be done to go ahead and clear those out. And back here in the Department of Redundant Redundancy, uh, if you look under System Programming, there's another selection, uh, aside from being under the Phantom status, called Kill Process. This does the exact same thing that the Kill Process does in the Solar Phantom status. But for some idiot reason, it starts an E-term session and shows you the, the uh, processes to kill in E-term instead. Uh, it's slightly more detailed than, than what you see uh, in the default view in the solar uh, kill process under, under the phantom status, but it does the same thing. Occasionally, you might run into the situation where you have to restart a scheduled process before it's actually scheduled to run again. 
uh, say you've accidentally killed a process and you go, oop, no, I need that, need, need that one to run, I need to restart it again. Or more often, if you have to do a, a system reboot uh, or your uh, sales order entry print phantoms uh, jam up and they have to be killed and restarted, this is the type of thing that you'd, you'd uh, have to restart. And uh, the process is pretty simple. You go into the edit scheduler. You go ahead and do a search for the process that you that you need to uh, start back up again. In our example here, we're doing the sales order entry print phantoms. So we put uh, SOE period PH to you know find them on the search list. And in the scheduler, you go ahead and change the start date for the day prior to the current day. And as soon as you do that and save it, uh, the, uh, the phantom process should start back up again. And finally, resetting record locks. As mentioned before, uh, there are occasions when a transaction gets locked and uh, when the user goes to go back into it, uh, they get a warning of, sorry, this is locked for editing view only. Uh, this often happens if uh, the user was in a transaction and the session got jammed up or froze or whatever for some reason and they've gone and logged back in or they've had to come to you and you've had to go through and kill the process so they could log back in. Lo and behold, they go back into the transaction and the system nags at them that, sorry, you can't edit it. It's locked for editing. You can view only. Uh, so you have to go in and do this. Uh, warning, do not attempt to do this until you have verified that the user that you're dealing with is logged off of all active sessions and that you've gone in and uh, killed any active login processes that uh, is identified with that user. Um, and be very, very sure that you're picking the right transactions and the right user that's not logged in. Uh, I have never had a problem with this fouling things up, but you could potentially do something bad. So be very careful before you do a, a record lock reset. And this concludes our presentation on the Eclipse system phantom, on how to kill processes, reschedule, and finally how to clear record locks. Hopefully this information will turn out to be useful for you. Thank you for your attention, and as always, I am not Scott Zahn.